If you're new to programming, you've probably heard of tools like Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. And those tools are really helpful for developing code, compiling code, and running your code. And so they're very, very powerful, really helpful for software developers. But if you're just new to programming, it can be kind of intimidating and confusing. And because there's so many different options there, there's so many different windows that pop up when you open those tools. So I'm gonna be talking about how to set up Visual Studio Code to do some C programming. And I'm gonna be showing you how to do this on a Mac. And for a bonus, I'm also gonna show you how to connect it with GitHub, which is also another tool that you can use in your software development. So my name's Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the foundations of software development. So let's get started. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects and I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. Okay, so I'm gonna go into Google search, type in Visual Studio Code for Mac, and this is what it comes up. And I'm just gonna click on this, Visual Studio Code, and then I'm gonna download it for Mac. Okay, so the download is done. I'm just going to click this and then unzip this zip file. And then there's Visual Studio Code, and then you can just drag this into your applications. And then it's going to show up here in your applications folder and you're just going to double click on that. And I already have mine installed, so I'm just going to open it. Okay, so here's Visual Studio Code. And when you open up Visual Studio Code, there's going to be a welcome tab here. And there's actually some helpful walkthroughs here. And there's a get started with VS Code, how to customize your editor. And I think this is um, not really that important. I think what's more important is learn the fundamentals. So let's click on learning the fundamentals. So like I mentioned, this is a text editor. So a text is just a text editor, but it becomes sort of like an IDE when you add extensions. So they have a section here about coding with extensions. And it says here, extensions are VS Code's power-ups. They range from handy productivity hacks and expanding out of the box features to adding completely new capabilities. So we can look at some popular extensions. Okay, so there's some extensions here for Python. And then there's one for C, C++. So this is one that you should install. If you're going to code in C or C++, you should install this one. I have this one installed. So make sure you install this one. Here's C, C++ extension pack. This is another one that I have installed. So make sure you install that one. Here's another extension that I use, C, C++ runner. And this is a really helpful one for debugging your code. If you want to use a debugger, then install this one. I do have a lot of tutorials using this extension, so make sure you check out my debugging videos in Visual Studio Code. And then the other notable extension that I have is Code Runner, and this is basically what it says. It just runs your code. All right, so we check off the code with extensions, and now built-in terminal. So in Visual Studio Code, it also has a built-in terminal that you can use. So the built-in terminal helps you to quickly run shell commands and monitor build output right next to your code. And this is really helpful because if you're learning how to code for the first time, you're probably going to be building console applications. And so if you're gonna build console applications, they're gonna be most likely in terminal. And that's how I did a lot of my early projects in university, I would use terminal and then all of the output would be in terminal. And so it's really helpful and really cool to have this feature in Visual Studio Code and something that I wish I had in university when I was first learning. So let's open terminal. And there you go. So here's the terminal. You can do ls to see what directories you have. These are my the typical standard directories in Mac. So here are all the GitHub repositories that I have. Speaking of GitHub, here's my GitHub dashboard. So make sure you have your account with GitHub and then create your repository. I am, I'm just going to do this tutorial with this repository, Rookie. So this is a Rookie repository with a simple, simple calculator.c program here. 
All right, so let's move on to these fundamentals. Now we can go into tracking your code with Git. So if you don't know what Git is, you can watch my other tutorials on Git. It's a really helpful tool and I recommend you start learning it from the beginning because it will really help for you a lot in your software development. So let's go to track your code with Git. Let's do this one and then it says clone repository. And so this just means that we have a repository in GitHub and we want to bring it into our local machine. So let's go ahead and clone repository, clone from GitHub. The extension GitHub wants to sign in using GitHub. So we're going to allow that. And then what's going to happen is that there's going to be a pop-up in your web browser that's asking you to authorize Visual Studio Code. So signed in as Henrik M. Dev, so let's continue. And then we authorize Visual Studio Code. So let's authorize that. All right, there you go. Now it has all of my repositories in here. So these are all the repositories I have on GitHub's website. So let's go click on this rookie one. And then we can choose where to select the repository destination. So I already have a version of this in my GitHub folder, but let's just do it in the desktop folder for now. Okay, so we have our Explorer here. It's just showing us the files that are inside this rookie directory. And if you go to my desktop, um, Visual Studio Code created this folder, rookie, and it has my calculator.c. It also has my .gitignore file, but it's just not showing it here. Okay, I did command shift period, and it's showing me all the hidden files. So there's a hidden .git, .git directory, a hidden .vs code directory, and this hidden .gitignore. Okay, so now let's keep going. So now the next thing to do for this bullet, track your code with Git, is to open source control. So we, let's open source control. Okay, so now there's a graph here. So this graph here pops up and it shows me the commit history of my repository. So here's my initial commit. And then I added subtraction multiplication. I created a branch here and then I merged this branch into my main branch. And then, oh, it even shows you on the side when this happened. This was one week ago in my other video. If you want to see that, you can watch my other video on that. I just did a tutorial on rookie mistakes in Git. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that out. And then I added a Git ignore and I merged it here. So this is really cool. Visual Studio Code really helps integrate your development with your GitHub and your GitHub account in your repositories. And then this box here just shows you all the, the changes you've made. So we haven't made any changes, so there are no files here. Okay, before we make any changes to the code, I wanna show you how it works first. And I also wanna show you how to run your code in Visual Studio Code. But before we do that, we need to make an adjustment in the settings. If you're just coding in Visual Studio Code for the first time, make sure you have this setting. So just type in run in terminal in the settings. So I just click settings here, this tab came up and then run in terminal and you make sure you want to make sure that this uh, check mark is, is uh, selected because if you don't do that, then your code is not going to run in terminal and then you can't really do user input because this calculator.c requires some user input here. And so make sure you're, make sure you check this box here. And then we're going to go to this code and we're going to run the code. So you have some options here. You can run it with a debugger or you can just run the code here. I'm just gonna run the code and then you can see here it's running it inside terminal. And now it's asking me to enter two integers. So five and one, and I'm gonna choose the operation minus and then five minus one is four, so it works. But if you if you do this in the settings, you don't do the check mark here. If you go to calculator and then you run the code here, it's going to run it in this output um, tab or output section and then it's running here and you can't really do any user input so I'm, I'm running a bunch of I'm doing trying to do some user input and I can't do anything so you can't actually run this code here and so that's why it's important to make sure you check this one here okay now let's modify the code and if you look at source control uh, there's still no files that were modified but let's what we're going to do is we're going to add an option here for the user to be able to do multiple operations or multiple computations, not just one. Okay, so I updated the code. Basically, there's a while loop here, and then 
it's going to be the same as before where we ask the user for two integers, the operation, and do that chosen operation. But it's also going to ask if the user wants to do another calculation. And if yes, then we're going to store the yes or no into again. And then the while loop is going to check is again a Y or is it a N? If it's not Y or capital Y, then we're going to exit the while loop and then print goodbye. And you can actually see this green line here. This green line means that this is new lines of code that were added. And then you can see the calculator.c is showing up here in the, um, the changes in the source control. So this window here is just showing you which files have changed so far. So there's an M here that means that this calculator.c has been modified. If you click on it, you can see all the changes that were made. So this plus means this was added. Um, this minus means this was removed, but then this one was added. Okay, we're gonna minimize this graph because we wanna make it less hectic. We just wanna focus on the changes here. So what we're gonna do here is we, it notices that we've modified this calculator.c and now we wanna add that, that those changes to our repository. So let's go ahead and add it here. And now it's saying stage changes. So that means we're going, to, we're about to commit these changes to our repository. And if all of the things I'm saying doesn't make sense to you, be sure to check out my Git videos. So we're going to add this here. And if you don't want to add this change, you can subtract the change here. And now it's not being, now that now those changes are gone. Um, but I want to have those changes back, so. Oh, let's first, let's run our code, make sure it still works. Okay, let's run this code. Enter two integers, four and eight, multiply. Okay, now it's asking me, do I want to calculate again? And so this is the new code that I added, and I'll say yes. So now it's asking me again to put in two integers. Nine, three, subtract, get six. Okay, now I don't want to do any more calculations. I can press, I can put in N, and then it says goodbye. Okay, now, so all of it works. So let's go ahead and commit these changes. Okay, I'm going to commit this one. And then there's going to be a sync changes button. This sync changes button is what pushes this commit to origin main. So let's push that. This action will pull and push commits from and to origin main. Okay. Okay, so now the source control doesn't show any changes here. So let's go ahead and check our repository in GitHub and see if the changes are there. Okay, so we're back here in the rookie repository and you can see here there's our commit message that we had in our Visual Studio code. It says, allow repeated calculations using a while loop. So we can open this one. And we see here that these are the changes that we were making in the code. So we added this while loop. And so now everything is here. And the goodbye is here too. You can see here how Visual Studio code is acting sort of like an integrated development environment. It allows you to compile your code, run your code, and then also allows you to use terminal and then you can actually connect it with GitHub and your repositories in GitHub. And so it's a really helpful tool. Okay, so there you go. I showed you how to install Visual Studio Code. I showed you how to start coding in Visual Studio Code. You basically just open your folder here, you go to file and then let's close the folder. Let's do it from the beginning. So you can go here, you open your folder and mine is in desktop rookie and it just has one C file here and also it has the executable that I built earlier. So you open that folder and then it shows you the files and then you do your development here and then you can run your code here with this play button. And if you have any changes, you can see your changes here in source control. You can also see the graph for your repository. If you don't have a GitHub account or you don't want to use Git for now, you can always just code in calculator.c and then do your development here and run your code here. And that's actually how I did it in university. I didn't use Git or GitHub in, during my time in university, but I was able to learn some foundational concepts in programming. All right, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start, 
you can download my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a 30 day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects. It's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it really helped you out and helped you out with setting up your Visual Studio code with GitHub to learn how to program in C on a Mac. And if it did help you, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if there's any other questions or if I went over something too fast or if you have any other questions about setting this up, please let me know in the comments section and I'll be sure to answer you there. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.